Greetings everyone and welcome back to my imperfect poetry. So this one is called The Toilet Dilemma. As I said at the end of my last video, it's probably the most important poem I've ever written, and I personally consider it to be one of my best. It's also a controversial subject. It's about the problems that trans and non-binary people can experience when using public toilets. So because of the controversy, I wasn't originally going to upload it to YouTube. Uh, I initially just posted it for some of my friends on Facebook, but then some of them requested it that I also share it here because some people might need to hear it and it can generally raise awareness. So I hasten to emphasise that I'm not trying to cause any trouble or draw attention to myself individually, just the issue. And I'm not trying to make anyone feel sorry for me. Um, I'm actually fortunate enough to have not personally experienced most of the things mentioned in the poem. I have experienced some of them, but not most of them. Uh, but I know that a lot of trans and non-binary people are less lucky than me, and it's more difficult for them. So I won't be responding to any hate comments on this video, and if I get a lot of them I'll just turn the comments off, which is something I don't want to have to do, because if it does speak to you in some way and you'd like to say something, then I really would like to hear it. And uh, before I begin, just a couple of warnings. Obviously, due to the subject, it may be upsetting for some people, and inevitably it contains a few references to bodily functions and body parts, but wherever possible I've made them inexplicit. And um, finally, it wasn't until I'd finished writing it that I realised how many specifically British words are in it, so my apologies to viewers of other nationalities. So here we go, the toilet dilemma. When I'm out and about, my mind is cleared and sufficient supplies are bought. Errands are run, legs are stretched, and then I'm taken short. Time to approach the only place where I still don't feel at ease. Which one of the two is it safest to choose? I usually choose to please. But whichever facility I take refuge in, I know that I could meet you. The one who just won't leave me in peace and treats the room like a zoo. You frown, you stare, you squint, you glare, you think, that isn't right. You feel that you just need to know what lies there out of sight. You feel uneasy, even queasy, that you can't identify me. Well, it turns out I'm just a person who needs to do a wee. Sometimes there is a neutral one, but if you see me go in there, you might accost me when I come out demanding, where's your wheelchair? Now, you might be the sort who is quite harmless, but keeps me far too long, bombarding me with endless questions, all of which are wrong. So, how does everything work down there? Do you stand or do you sit? And what do you lot call yourselves? Are you a he or she or it? Do you always need to use loo roll or can you still just shake? Do guys like you get periods? Are these real or are they fake? And what's going on with surgery? Have you had the op? Do you ever feel like you're going too far? Do you know when to stop? I mean, I'm just so curious. It's all so new to me. Do you think you ever will go back to what you used to be? Look, I've nothing against your lifestyle choice. I'm just wondering how you piss. Oh yes, I'm sure as a perfect stranger, it's your right to know all this. And while we're at it, what you do in bed? <laughs> You've got me thinking deep. I really hate to disappoint you, but mostly I just sleep. You frown, you stare, you squint, you glare, you think, that isn't right. You feel that you just need to know what lies there out of sight. You feel uneasy, even queasy, that you can't identify me. Well, funnily enough, I'm just a person who needs to do a wee. Or you might be the sort who is not just a nuisance, but feels the need to interfere. I feel my safety is compromised by your penetrating leer. Hmm, long hair, bracelets, bulky hands, conspicuous Adam's apple. Pink shirt, low cough, high cheekbones. Is that a bit of stubble? It isn't just an innocent woman who's wandered in by mistake. It's one of those messed up, deranged perverts causing trouble for trouble's sake. You've got some nerve being in this room. Have you no shame, no fear? 
I don't care where you relieve yourself, as long as it's not in here. It's only men allowed in here. No dresses, skirts, no bras. The Venus room is down the hall. In here, we honour Mars. You know I could call the police right now. You're invading a private space. Well, the ladies would say that as well, if they got a look at my face. So, either way, you might challenge me and accuse me of deception. It depends if you're looking at my clothes or my body. It's all about your perception. And that's the dilemma I have to face when the bladder's warning starts. Risk getting attacked for different clothes, or arrested for different parts. You frown, you stare, you squint, you glare, you think, that isn't right. You feel that you just need to know what lies there out of sight. You feel uneasy, even queasy, that you can't identify me. Well, the truth is, I am just a person who needs to do a we. Just like you. Thank you very much.